this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll explain what defines the basic shape of a set in sleeve sweater and the various options for constructing a sweater like this. This is the fourth video in a series about sweater styles and how they are constructed. This is the fourth video in a series about sweater styles and how they're constructed. In this video, you'll learn how the set in sleeve sweater differs from the previous styles we've seen, the drop shoulder and modified drop shoulder sweater. I'll explain advantages and disadvantages of set in sleeve construction and show you examples of sweaters knit with set in sleeves. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, tap or mouse over the video playback area of your screen and use the chapter titles to guide you to the starting point of the desired section. Use the gear icon to slow down or speed up playback. What differentiates one sweater style from another is how they are constructed between the underarms and the neck. So from the armholes down, sweaters are essentially just three separate tubes. And all of the different sweater styles we are talking about in this series are going to look identical from this point down. From this point, up, the sweater style is defined by how the armholes are shaped and how the sleeves are shaped and how the sleeves and the body come together to go from three tubes to one tube. So each sweater style has different ways that that is accomplished. The first sweater in this series was a standard drop shoulder sweater and in that situation the entire body was knit, was knit rectangularly and just the location of where the armhole opening was going to be was marked on the sweater body. So you can see right here I've marked the place where the, the sleeve will be inserted right here. So there's nothing otherwise that would mark the location of the armhole. The sleeve for a drop shoulder sweater is very simply shaped to it's basically sort of trapezoidal or triangularly shaped with a, a, a straight bind off at the top of the sleeve. The modified drop shoulder sweater eliminates some of the fabric at the underarm. So you're eliminating a sort of rectangularly shaped um, piece of the body. So you do actually have the uh, underarm marked there. The sleeve though is shaped exactly the same up to the armhole and then it's just extended for the same amount of fabric that you have eliminated from the body. So the fit is essentially the same, but aesthetically the seam line for is going to hit a little bit closer to the shoulder. It's not going to hang over quite as far as with a standard drop shoulder. In addition, you add shoulder shaping that conforms more to uh, how an actual human body is shaped. So with both a drop shoulder and modified drop shoulder, you have this big angle right here where the, the shaping is and the body is. And so when that sleeve comes down near the body, you end up with a lot of extra fabric at the underarm. You end up with less with the modified drop because of the angled shoulders, but still quite a bit of fabric. This is what the armhole openings for a satin sleeve look like. You bind off um, some, um, if you're working bottom up, you would bind off some stitches at the underarm and then you would work decreases until the width of the front or the back um, matched up with your actual shoulder. So there's not meant to be really any overhang. So the armhole is deeper on a set in sleeve and it is curved here. So the idea is you get some of this horizontal span right at the underarm and then you have some curving right here that's matching the shape of your arm um, before it ends up going straight up. So, and this, this looks like it's a lot narrower because it's stockinette and it's uh, curling under. So if we look at the sweater on this little quarter size mannequin, we see that the sleeve is just hanging down like this. The sleeve itself, when you look at the, the fabric up to the underarm part, once you get past where the sleeve would meet the underarm, 
you are no longer creating length at the underarm. You're only creating length up here to the shoulder. So it's kind of a wedge shape when you look at it from the side. If you were to look at it just as a flat piece of fabric, the cap has a sort of a bell shape. So it's meant to conform around the top of the shoulder and down the sides of the arm to, in order to fit something that actually conforms to all of the body parts. So you can get something that's much closer fit, but actually maintains a lot of range of motion. Any sweater style can be knit in pieces and seamed, or it can be knit seamlessly. And a satin sleeve is no exception. Any sweater can be knit bottom up. Any sweater can be knit top down. This sweater was knit in a hybrid of bottom up and top down construction, and it was knit seamlessly. So I cast on the body on the bottom, I knit it in the round up to the armholes, and then I switched to knitting flat for the upper back and for the upper front. And then I had to split again into separate flat pieces when I was doing the neck shaping. The sleeves, I knit top down and I used a seamless method that, that um, uses short rows in order to shape that cap. Um, but there's more than one way of doing that kind of sleeve as well. In addition, there are ways of working the body and the sleeves simultaneously down to the armholes from the top down and then separating the sleeves out and the body just like you would for any top down seamless constructed sweater. Because it's a sudden sleeve sweater, the construction is more complicated than it would be with something like a yoke or raglan sweater. For a simultaneous set in sleeve sweater, you start with the back stitches. You cast down the stitches you need for the back. You use short row shaping to shape the shoulders. And then you knit for an inch or two, depending on the pattern and the designer and the fit of the sweater, you'll knit an inch or two down, creating the armhole for, for a couple of inches. Then you come back to the shoulders and you cast on for each of, of the fronts separately, shaping the neck as you are coming down. Again, once you have gotten an inch or two of the front done, then you switch to working things simultaneously. So you would continue shaping your neck if you needed to, but you would knit across these stitches, pick up stitches at the top of the cap, knit across these, pick up stitches along those inch or two of stitches on each side there, and then work across here. And then you would continue shaping the neck as you work back and forth. Once the neck was complete, then you could work in the round if you were working a pullover. And you would be doing your shaping only on the sleeve cap. You would be working straight for the armhole. And then once you got to the armhole, you'd be separating things out. One of the big advantages of a set in sleeve sweater is the fit. You don't have a lot of excess fabric at the underarm. You add fabric in at the top of the sleeve where it's needed, but you don't add any at the underarm. The sleeve hangs at a more natural angle and you can also get a much closer fit and just a more tailored look than you can with the other types of sweaters. Now the disadvantage is that in order to get this better fit, the, the shaping is more complex. You have to create, if you're knitting flat, this bell-shaped sleeve cap and you have to sew it in um, to this sleeve and that can be a bit cumbersome. Alternatively, there are ways of knitting a set-in sleeve so you don't have to sew anything in. This particular sleeve um, was knit by picking up stitches around the armhole and then working short rows. But that means you have to work short rows in order to do this shaping. Uh, this sweater that is knit with a bulky weight uh, yarn was knit bottom up flat in pieces and it had set in sleeves that were seamed in. So this is sort of the classic method of that people think of when they think of set in sleeve sweaters. This is a sweater that I knit um, bottom up because the front and the back were uh, two different colors. I knit each of the body pieces separately and seamed them on the side. 
But for the sleeves, I used Barbara Walker's top-down method of picking up stitches and working short rows. This sweater is a top-down seamless sweater construction that uses a tweak on Barbara Walker's method. And it, it's knit top down uh, seamlessly um, with the set in sleeves. You can see that line right there, that, that seam line, and you can see the curved shape coming around the underarm. Um, but it was all knit top down seamlessly using the simultaneous set in sleeve method. This sweater is one that I just completed last week. It's based on Barbara Walker's kangaroo pouch sweater from Knitting Without Tears. The body was worked completely completely in the round all the way up to the shoulders. So the armholes and the neck were also worked in the round. So I wasn't knitting back and forth at all except to do some shoulder shaping on the back. And the neck opening and the armholes were cut open uh, with using uh, steaks. I've included a number of resources down in the video description to help you find patterns for set in sleeves that use different construction options such as bottom up or top down, as well as books that can help you learn more about designing or modifying a sweater that will fit your unique body. To see this entire playlist of videos in this series, you can click over here. To see the, a playlist of all my videos related to sweater knitting, click over here. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.